Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Zoners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. About two months ago, a proof of concept exploit was released for CBE 2018-2025-0. This vulnerability was a vulnerability in WinRAR, the RAR unpacker for Windows, and it affected the ACE format. If you remember, there was this odd thing where actually WinRAR no longer had the source code for this particular module. So in order to fix this vulnerability, they had to remove support for ACE files. But ever since the proof of concept was released, we have sort of seen a steady trickle of emails that take advantage of this particular vulnerability. The email arrives as a RAR file now, as Didier points out in today's diary, where he's looking at one of these exploits. RAW files are usually just used uh, to compress and somewhat obfuscate malicious code, but in this case, this RAW file is actually an ACE file, and uh, then when opened with WinRAR, it will actually start the exploit. DDA is taking a look at how to quickly analyze these types of files, in particular, how to figure out if a RAR file is indeed an ACE file, which I at this point would pretty much always consider malicious. Now, where does this malware come from? The German security website HiC.de did uh, summarize some of the findings that were recently published by various Twitter users, indicating that the people actually sending a malware are becoming younger and younger and also less and less sophisticated. This, of course, in part due to malware becoming easier to use. I've spoken before about uh, packages that are for sale or these uh, ransomware as a service uh, offerings and such. And because the actual actors here that are sending the malware are becoming also less sophisticated, it happens more and more that they actually infect themselves. There's an interesting post by Mr. Chalk on um, Twitter. That's an individual that often posts about malware showing, for example, how a particular author here infected himself with spyware and then as a result inadvertently posted pictures from his webcam. Another issue here, of course, is also that due to the age of uh, these individuals, law enforcement tends to be less interested in actually prosecuting uh, these uh, individuals. And last week, I mentioned that a number of antivirus tools are having problems with the April uh, Windows update. The systems won't boot or performance uh, will be really slow after applying the update. Well, uh, one particular antivirus, McAfee, that was left out of the initial, initial report now stated that they are also affected by this particular problem. McAfee also published a little bit more details about this is saying that the change affected the client server runtime subsystem CSRSS. That's something that's actually uh, patched quite regularly in these monthly patch update. But in this case, it sort of led to a potential deadlock, which then of course may lock up the system. Microsoft has stopped applying uh, this particular update if you are running affected antivirus. Not sure if McAfee is already in Microsoft's list. And over the last few months, we have seen quite a few phishing emails that took advantage of Azure block storage. The trick here is that if you are storing your phishing page in Azure, then you're actually getting a Windows.net domain, which of course most users associate with Microsoft. So these phishing pages are becoming a lot more effective as a result. Malwareresearch.org now published recipes for Gmail as well as for Outlook 365 to allow you to block these emails or warn users of Windows.net URLs that may be hiding within the email. 
These are straightforward rules to apply and particular for Office 365 users who are probably the main target of these phishing emails. It makes quite a bit of sense to alert your users that these links are not genuine Microsoft links. And if you are still using Windows 7 as of last week, you may have seen warnings alerting you that Windows 7 is no longer going to be supported as of January next year. These warning messages will offer free upgrades and will link to Microsoft in order to learn more about this change. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.